Hello everyone, this is Rena K. Hernade, and we are here to discuss the continuing professional development, the lifeblood of the teaching profession. When I say CPD, it's a continuing a professional development. The professional license for teaching obtained after passing the licensure examination for teachers, or LET. It simply indicates that professional teachers have the minimum competencies required to continue developing after obtaining their professional license. It is a commitment to ongoing lifelong learning. CPD encourages looking forward and identifying opportunities to learn something new, refresh existing knowledge, improve skills, or simply Keep up to date with the latest developments within a particular profession or industry. In practice, CPD can mean everything from taking a training course or attending an educational event to studying for new qualifications or learning new aspects of a job. For the philosophical basis of CPD, First is, growth is an evidence of life. This implies that anything that is alive grows, or anything that grows is alive. So the teacher who is alive grows physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, socially, and spiritually. If he doesn't grow, he is no longer alive. Man or woman is an unfinished project. It's always in the process of becoming better and better as a person and as a professional teacher. So no person, no professional can claim that he or she has already arrived at a state of perfection. Neither a perfecta or perfecto who is perfect by name is not perfect. And no professional has arrived at a perfect state. The third is, no person has arrived. This means that no professional has arrived at a perfect state. So every professional is expected to continue developing. The Legal and Historical Foundations of Continuing Professional Development Batas Pambansa 232, the Education Act of 1982 this was an act providing for the establishment and maintenance of an integrated system of education. In accordance with Section 2, this act shall apply to and govern both formal and non-formal system in public and private schools in all levels of the entire educational system. It establishes the basic policy and objective for education. It establishes the rights, duties, and obligations of those in the education community. In Section 16 of Chapter 3, it is mainly about the responsibility to maintain and sustain professional growth advancement and maintain professionalism in behavior at all times. It is also about being accountable for the efficient and, e and effective attainment of specified learning objectives. The Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001, also known as Republic Act 9155, establishes the overarching framework for principal empowerment by enhancing principal and leadership objective as well as local school-based administration in the context of transparency and local accountability. Governance of Basic Education Act provides that a school must be managed by a school head who has the authority, responsibility, and accountability for achieving higher learning outcomes. Section 7a states that the Secretary of Education shall have authority and responsibility in addition to his or her power under existing laws, including but not limited in this following, which are state of employment, ability to work professionally, welfare, and operational state. Section 7E states that the school heads must have policies, plans, and standards that are in line with the national education policies, mainly focused for 
authority, accountability, responsibility, and to promote employee growth. The Board for Professional Teachers, BPT, passed the resolution number 435, section 177, to adopt the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. Pursuant to the provisions of the paragraph, Article 11 of Republic Act number 7836, otherwise known as the Philippine Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994. So, every teacher shall participate in the Continuing Professional Education or CPE program of the Professional Regulation Commission and shall pursue such other studies as well improve his efficiency, enhance the prestige of the profession, and strengthen his competence, virtues, and productivity in order to be nationally and internationally competitive. Executive Order Number 266, Series of 1995. So, institutionalization of the continuing professional education or CPA programs of the various professional regulatory boards under the supervision of the Professional Regulation Commission or the PRC. So, in Section 1, the completion of professional licenses of the Continuing Professional Education or CPA programs adopted by all boards is hereby imposed as a mandatory requirement for the renewal of professional licenses. So, Executive Order Number 266, Series of 1995, was premised on the following. So, the various professions play a crucial role in nation building. And it is imperative to impose upon registered professionals the completion of the Continuing Professional Education or CPE programs adopted by the concerned board as a prerequisite for the renewal of their licenses. So in this, the professionals who undertake the CPE programs are enabled not only to upgrade or improve their technical knowledge and skills, but also to keep them abreast with modern trends and technology in their respective professions, thereby assuring the rendition of highly qualitative professional service or services that will be globally competitive under the General Agreement on Trade in Services, or in short, GATS, and at the same time securing the safety and protection of the public. Whereas, the confidence and patronage of the public in a profession depend upon his competence and the quality of service rendered resulting from his accusation of updated technical knowledge and skill. Republic Act 10912 or the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016. So it is an act which requires CPD as the mandatory requirement for the renewal of professional identification card. So the CPD Act lapsed into law on July 21, 2016. And it took effect on August 16, 2016. So the implementation of Republic Act number 10912 started on March 15, 2017. New provisions took effect on March 1, 2019. That is outlined the new implementing rules and regulation or IRR of the CPD law. The salient provisions of Republic Act 10912, the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016. So in Article 1, Section 2, Declaration of Policy, it is hereby declared the policy of the state to promote and upgrade the practice of profession in this country. Toward this end, the state shall implement measures to continuously e to improve professional competence, assure their contribution to the nation's general welfare, economic growth, and development. So, the required number of CPD units 
units. In Section 10 of Article 3, CPD is made as a mandatory requirement in a renewal of all registered and licensed professional identification card. So, here's the following credit units required under Professional Regulatory Board for Professional Teachers, Resolution Number 11, Series of 2017. Last December 2017, the credit units required 15, and last January to December 2018, the required credit units are 30. So, in January 2019 onwards, the required credit units is 45. So, how do we earn CPD credit units? Credit units may be earned by professionals who participate in CPD programs that may emanate from the PRB for the development of the profession. Any excess credit units earned shall not be carried over to the next three years period except, except credit units earned for doctor doctorate and master's degrees are credit credited once during the compliance period. What are the CPD programs to earn CPD credit units? So, CPD programs refers to a set of learning activities accredited by the CPD Council which equip the professionals with advanced knowledge, skills, and values in a specialized or in a, an enter or multidisciplinary field of study, self-directed research, and or lifelong learning examples of CPD programs include seminars, workshops, technical lectures, subject, subject matter meetings, non-degree retraining lecture, 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 and scientific meeting, modules, tours, and visits. And also, here are the methods for professional teachers to earn credit units. The professional track, academic track, self-directed track, and productive scholarship. So first, professional track. Professional track trainings offered by CPD providers, PRC certification, and participate in CBD Council training, serve as a resource, speaker, speaker, trainer, or consultant teacher of demonstration, Penal and panelist, respondent, facilitator, moderator, and CPD Council assigned to monitor the implement implementation of the approved CPD program. So in an academic track, so, master's degree completion, completion of doctoral program candidacy, graduation from the doctoral program, obtain a postdoctoral diploma and professional chair guarantee and or a fellowship guarantee. So, in self-directed track, trainings provided by uncredited CPD providers searching as an Creator example is ISO, ISA, IS, uh, PAICUCOA, or PAASCU, or AACCUP, and etc. So, you they use the profession to conduct study tours and social activities. Next is the productive scholarship. It has created a create a program, training module, a curriculum guide, or any other resource. It has a published a professional magazine, optical or a technical research paper, creates an invention or creative work, or writes a book of mo or monograph, and, oh, and awards for professional and or a lifetime achievement. Now, let's proceed to the Continuing Professional Development Plan. This is a proof that a professional teacher has made CPD his or her way of life in the formulation of a CPD plan which he or she religiously follow. So, CPD plan, every professional who has sincere to go professionally must have an annual personal CPD plan purposively. And also, professional teachers formulating their annual CPD 
not just because it is mandatory, but because this is something they owe to themselves as professionals and to the public they serve. And this is what we call professionalism. Now, let's proceed to joining professional learning community. First, we have professional learning communities. So, powerful collaboration with teacher work together to analyze and improve their classroom practices in a systematic way. And second, school learning action cells. So, this is mechanism for CPD. So, I'll be showing you a sample template on how to construct your own CPD plan. As you can see here, Teachers Individual Plan for Professional Development or IPPD. So, in the template objectives, what competence will I enhance? In the methods, what professional activity will I undertake to achieve my objective? And for the resources, what will I do to access resources? And for the time frame, when do I expect to have finished it or accomplished? And lastly, the success indicator, what PPST competence would I have enhanced? And what learner's performance would have improved? Now, for the personal CPD plan, here, we notice that the two templates have the same, right? The only difference is on how they do it. So, for the personal CPD plan, we have here training needed. So, example is preparations of PowerPoint presentation. And your objective is to make PowerPoint presentations for at least five lessons. And what activity should I undergo to address my need? So, you have here tutorial. And we also have resources needed. For the human resources, you'll need help from a, an expert. And for the material resources, you'll have a laptop and LCD projector. And for the time frame, for example, is you're given... June 2022, your expected output here is five PowerPoint presentations. And lastly, the expected outcome. So you'll have more interesting and more concrete lesson presentation and improved student score. Let's proceed to our last topic, the characteristics of effective CPD. So, continuous, collaborative, focused on a specific teacher need, job embedded, give enough time, and funded. So, what do you mean by continuous? CPD must be continuous. That's the word continuing professional development. A professional does not stop developing or else he or she rots. Second is, CPD must also be collaborative, thus the need to be part of a PLC, a professional learning community. It was Helen Keller who said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. So, CPD must be focused on a specific teacher need. It responds to a need and so highly relevant to the teacher. A CPD that is prescribed by higher officials does not necessarily respond to teachers' need. If CPD is job embedded, it becomes even more relevant. The teacher has not to be removed from workplaces for CPD, so there is no work disruption. What the teacher is trained on is exactly what he or she does. And lastly, CPD with support fans is definitely better than one without. That's all and thank you for listening.